Hello, I'm Mike Shear, Executive Editor of the Columbus Dispatch, and I'm here today with Dispatch reporter Mark Williams to discuss our Sunday cover story on Ohio's shrinking population projections. Here in Columbus, all we seem to talk about, Mark, is how much there's growth and development is uh, dominating the headlines, uh, do we enough housing in Columbus, but the story across the rest of Ohio is much different as you're reporting in today's story. Um, it, that scope kind of caught our attention when you came across the state report from last year forecasting the state's population will drop by 675,000 people, 5.7 percent by 2050, only 25 years and a few months from now, if the current trends hold. And really shocking to me in that is by uh, the U.S. population is expected to grow by about, by about 17 percent in that same time frame. So with all this growth in Central Ohio and the uh, growth nationally. How is Ohio, why is Ohio still losing population? What have you found in your reporting? Well, it, it's a combination of a couple of things, Mike. Uh, one of which is that um, our population in the state, we're getting older. Um, our families are having fewer babies. And the, um, we are, uh, the group of people moving to Ohio, whether they're from the United States or from another country, um, is not enough to, to, Take over to, to replace those to replace those things. So you add it all up, and then you've got a combination of of, uh, of uh, what's been happening for a long time in Ohio. Really, I mean, what's happened is that uh, because of our population growth in Central Ohio, it's kind of colored up that the rest of the state has been losing population in some cases for decades. Uh, but now it's it's not even enough growth here in Central Ohio to make up for what's happening elsewhere in the state. Okay. And this is not a new problem, obviously. Ohio has been shrinking slowly since back in the 70s. Uh, it was kind of when the industrial heyday of the state uh, peaked, I guess you might say. Um, so what, what are the new factors at play in this? Or is it the same story, just that the growth in central Ohio is not enough to, in a few other pockets, is not enough to overcome yeah, it's, the losses? Yeah, it, it, it's really not. So when we go back and you, and you, and you look what's happened um, in a lot of the counties, a lot of the counties you know, we're a lot of the communities, a lot of the cities in a lot of these counties were built around one or two or three big companies that had a oversized influence in that community. And so, you know, you look at uh, automation in factories, you look at uh, globalization in factories, you know, shipping that production overseas. And a lot of that's led to these, you know, a lot of the companies and factories have shut down. Um, coal mining towns have been decimated in Ohio because there's, we, hard, we hardly mine any coal uh, in the state anymore. So um, when young people are growing up, they're not seeing the opportunities. And so they're, they're moving away. Um, so that's a result of that is basically you have an older population left in a lot of the communities um, and, uh, and not enough to, not enough to replace uh, what's happened with uh, when, uh, when you know, people pass away and, move, you know, and youngsters move on to other places. Now, these projections came from the Ohio Department of Development and their own report looking forward. And obviously, projections are just that. They may be true, they may be worse, maybe better. It's hard to say 25 years out, obviously. But if people have not looked at the map yet, it's mo mostly in eastern Ohio, southern Ohio are the really big losses. But they're really across the state, northwest Ohio, northeast Ohio, although there are pockets of growth. Um, so when you talk to the Department of Development about this, I know you interviewed the director um, what what do they tell us, and what are they what are they doing to hopefully mitigate these population projections? Yeah, so it's it's interesting. The um, um, the state the, uh, the the director of the Department of Development they're very aware of what's going on, and and when their first initial reaction was just like, oh my gosh, look at this, it's really pretty stunning. Um, but they've been aware of this as well over the years. This is not anything new, as we talked about, Mike. Yeah. But the um, but the uh, you know the, the department of development has and and actually the wine administration has been doing has been doing steps to try to help fill in some of this to try to to try to get some of this they've recognized that there's a problem and so there's they've implemented implemented a, a number of programs to try to uh, funnel more money towards some of these communities for various programs that they think can help with their downtowns uh, jobs Ohio. Uh, has got um, uh, um, a program too, where it's trying to funnel money into particular programs that are meant to help local businesses um, and expand and grow, and try to see whether there's ways that they can come up with some things. Some of the money's been direct with, uh, directed specifically to Appalachia uh, to try to help uh, with some of those communities come up with ways to can uh, you know whether it's local tourism or helping a factory grow or keying on a business to help um, something expand or even help startups. Okay. 
Um, as I've, I've been, before I started working at the dispatch this year, I, I've been working with a lot of the smaller papers across Ohio and spent time up in Northeast Ohio the last seven years. So we've seen, you know, as you drive around Ohio and you go through the small towns, you see the challenges they're facing. They're pretty evident as you go through. Um, and your story today, you read about a program in Marion, which I think is mm-hmm. an interesting st- uh, city, close to Columbus, uh, but close to the rapidly growing Delaware County, obviously. Um, they have an Ohio State branch there. They've had, they've had some big factories there in the past. But uh, can you talk a little bit about the Jobs Ohio program that they're doing there in Marion to try to help, uh, I guess, seed activity, I guess? Yeah, so, so that, uh, that's the, the Jobs Ohio program is, is, is really meant to uh, address the issues. What we call them, you could call them legacy cities or cities that have been left behind, whatever term you want to use. And so what they've done there is they've given money to um, – Marion County for a, um, a project uh, that's downtown uh, to help um, make some co-working space, um, which is so common around here mm-hmm. uh, in Columbus, but not so much there. Um, and it'll help another uh, uh, some other offices uh, located in that site uh, to help. Uh, I'm assuming that this is a building that's downtown prominent that can be kind of a benchmark or a, a center point for a lot of that downtown activity with the hope that once you get that thing going, then it'll help filter out and, and, and p- people will find it. Oh, I want to be down there, too. Um, and Marion County is kind of interesting. So this story that we're these stories that we're that we're doing today uh, kind of built on a on a package of stories we did in 2018 where it was we were noting um, um, certain metro areas were coming out of were coming out of the financial crisis really in a powerful way, whereas most other communities were struggling. Mm-hmm. And so we used Delaware and Marion County as sort of that dividing line between um, what's, you know, something that's going on where Delaware is like one of the fastest growing counties, maybe in the United States versus what's going on in Marion County, which is a county that's been struggling. Um, and so um, this is kind of an effort to try to even draw more attention to that and to see what else uh, might be able to to call this out and, and get people talking about it. Yeah. So, um, as we know, we talked about a little bit ago, these are projections, and migration, obviously, and immigration could play a significant role in changing these numbers, and I guess we have a, a real-life example of that today in Springfield, where the Haitian immigrants have been in the news here the last few weeks. Um, what does the state expect to see in terms of migra- migration of immigrants into the into Ohio, and do we expect that to continue? And could that offset some of these projections for losses? Oh, it, or? it sure can. But you know, you have to look at it from the sense of like, okay, so tell me who's going to be president for the next four years. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so certainly you've got um, you know President Trump that is is not so keen on immigration. Um, you would think that the President Harris administration would be more welcoming. Um, so, um, but there's certainly a notion of, of immigration could really address some of this. Um, the and not and not just immigration from folks overseas, but yeah. even folks from other parts of the country. Mm-hmm. Um, I think a lot of times people look at uh, you know like the, the Intel project and think that there's uh, Ohioans that work for Intel in other parts of the country that might be given an opportunity to come back home, so to speak. So I think uh, there's different ways that the, 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 the immigration thing certainly could go a long way in trying to try to help address some of this. Um, you know, the question is having the local resources to be able to um, make sure that those people are properly welcomed um, and everybody can handle handle an influx of people. Yeah, yeah. Okay. The, um, I don't know, I guess it was maybe 15 years or so ago, there was all this talk in eastern Ohio about the shale boom mm-hmm. and fracking and how that was going to revitalize the economies of Eastern Ohio. Um, you, I know it's part of your story today. You may talk a bit about what you found out in that front, and but obviously the population estimates suggest that it's not going to have a huge impact on at least on helping those areas grow. Certainly, yeah, I think that was kind of the thing that surprised me the most um, in looking at this. Is that the projections show that even with um, all that that's going on, I mean, it, there's enormous production of oil and gas. Uh, going on in eastern Ohio, and yet those counties are probably among the worst when it, as far as the projections go. Um, so um, it was interesting on that part, and I and I, you know, one of the things we we hear a lot about Appalachian, the history of Appalachia, um, is its whole in just, in the whole part of that state, and the other parts of Appalachia and other states are as well are all tied to a lot of them are tied to commodities, boom and bust. We've seen this with coal. You know, towns get created, towns disappear. 
And so, um, uh, but there seems to be a notion that that this really hasn't it really hasn't helped. I mean, the suspicion was a, a lot of early on in the um, in the oil and gas boom, you had a lot of out of staters that came in and were responsible for the drilling. Um, the development department says they are now they've ramped up training programs that are meant to make sure that local residents now can get these can get these uh, jobs more jobs in that in that area. So we'll see what we'll see what happens. Certainly, there's lo- there's been a lot of wealth that's been created um, in Appalachia. Uh, the economies have grown significantly, but it hasn't but it hasn't necessarily translated into seeing people stay or people move in. Um, and um, you know, I, I think that's been one of the the telling parts of that story. Is there's there's a there's a a group that I've I've worked with a little bit over the years that um, is trying to. Uh, change up the economies of these of the Appalachian communities um, by promoting more clean energy and um, um, you know um, uh, renewable energy programs, um, you know solar and um, and wind that they think can transform these economies and, and make them more sustainable, so that you don't get these kind of population losses like what we're seeing. Um, so, but yeah, for right now, it's 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 been. There's been a lot of investment made in those areas, but it just hasn't it hasn't translated into more people. Okay. Um, for these stories, you spoke to some officials in uh, in Harrison County and also up in Richland County, the Mansfield area. Mm-hmm. What what was kind of their uh, feedback to you on what they see as the challenge and the opportunity they had? Yeah, it's interesting. Uh, the Richland area, Richland County area, the mayor there um, has been involved in economic development for a long time in other parts of Ohio. In, before she became mayor, she was um, up there in Richland County, too. She's been involved in economic development. And so, um, you know, she said the folks up there, you know, they certainly recognize that this is a problem. Mm-hmm. Um, they think they've, and, and, and to be clear, Mansfield area was, when, when manufacturing started going such a struggle back oh 20 years or so ago mansfield was just crushed yeah, with yeah. with one company after another going you know losing going out of business or closing a factory um, she said they've been very you know it's been very sobering for them they but they recognize that they've got to deal with this and so they're 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 they feel like they're trying to tackle it on tackle it head on um, they think that they've got their population base now more stable um, and so they're they're feeling better about that uh, but they recognize that they have a lot of work. Um, Harrison County, it's it's kind of interesting because they've had some of the same issues um, that you saw with uh, with uh, Richland County. Um, the um, and um, there's a uh, but the but the economic development director there's got a sense of optimism about the about the county and and maybe that's just kind of their you know economic development director is always they tend need, to be optimistic. They tend to be optimistic, yes. no matter what. Um, um, and they've got several energy related projects going on there. Um, and, um, they think that those can help, uh, drive some population growth. And this guy also, one of the directors there I spoke to said he also thinks that there's an optimism in the sense that, um, you know, uh, younger people are going to want to return home one day to be close to, you know, family. Um, and that is a story of, of Appalachia. Yeah. There's a lot of strong family ties. And he's confident that that'll happen one day. And it's interesting, even in, even in small counties like this, we you know, we think of uh, affordable housing and lack of housing and uh, is a big city problem. But it's uh, it's a problem in Harrison County too. Yeah. I mean, a lot of their older homes have been torn down over the years, and and somebody moving there, you know, probably wants something newer. And with the modern efficiencies and conveniences that you you see in a, in a newer home, um, and so they're having trouble with some of those issues, which you, you would. Which you wouldn't think that they would necessarily have, since their population has been shrinking. But it's a, it's a problem statewide, not just here in Columbus. Okay. Um, we next week's our cover story is going to touch on the baby bust of Ohio, the, the low birth rate. But this, we may briefly touch on that. That is a part of this too. Mm-hmm. I think the state had the lowest number of births ever a couple of years ago. Um, so how much is this simple demographics of Death rate versus birth rate playing a role. Oh yeah, it's extraordinary. And, and one of the things we don't talk about in the story, but was um, an interesting tidbit, was the um, expected pretty dramatic decline in teen births over the next uh, twenty five years. Mm-hmm. I think everybody would be thrilled about that, right? Yeah. Um, but the problem is, is that older older women aren't aren't making up for that uh, for that decline in the among teenage births, and so that's a big part of it. Um, and um, and you know, we get into that story that 
is going to be happening. And then I, you know, it, we all hear these same things, Mike. It's just so expensive to raise a child. Yeah. And, uh, child care is, is so tough. And um, the other cost of, of uh, providing for a, for a kid these days. Um, so I think it's going to be interesting to see what states can do uh, to try to help uh, try to help help young families. All right. Well, thank you, Mark. And uh, for our viewers out there and listeners, uh, we have several stories on this topic today. Mark's main story, which is the Sunday cover story. There's additional stories on Central Ohio and the growth we expect here. Also, pieces looking at the um, Bucyrus area and the and Eastern Ohio areas. Uh, as, as we uh, examine the population challenge that Ohio face, is facing. And as we said, next week our cover story is going to be on Ohio's birth rate and why families are not having children. We'll have a deeper dive into that with reporter Samantha Hendrickson, and she'll be joining me next week. So until then, we uh, thank you for uh, joining us, and we'll talk to you soon.